Hello, my name is Effie Rossi and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. I would like to present to you our work with the title Persistent Eurasian Double Jets Favor Summer Heat Waves Over Europe. This work is in collaboration with Kai Kornhuba, Goretz Beobider Schwager, Fei Luo, and Dean Kaumau. First of all, the motivation behind this study has to do with the fact that in recent decades, Europe has faced an increase in devastating heat waves, which is faster than in the rest of the middle latitudes. For example, we can see at this figure the distributions of the trends of heat wave cumulative intensity for all land grid points over the middle latitudes with blue color and over Europe in particular with brown, and we see how the distribution for Europe is shifted to greater values. And if you look at the mean value for all middle latitude land points and all European land points, we see that the one for Europe is almost four times larger. So we are wondering why is this happening? Of course, we know that thermodynamic factors are important in a warming climate for heat extremes, but what is the contribution of large-scale atmospheric dynamics, and particularly in summer? So our hypothesis is that high-latitude land warming and decreased westerlies in summer may result in more and more persistent double jets over the Eurasian sector that could partly explain the increase in European heat extremes. The specific research questions that we want to answer are, is there an increase in double jet states in summer? And are those double jet states linked to more heat extremes in Europe? The data used in this study are reanalysis data from the ERA-5 dataset for July and August 1979-2020. And in particular, maximum temperature on the surface to calculate the heat wave metrics, mean surface temperature at the surface, and zonal wind and different pressure levels starting from 800 hectopascal closer to the surface up to 100 hectopascal close to the tropopoles. In order to identify the different jet stream states, we used self-organizing maps, which is a neural network-based clustering algorithm. With the different sensitivity analysis, we compared, for example, to different clustering methodologies or tried with different uh, number of clusters, and we could always obtain robust results. So for this presentation, I will focus on three SOM patterns for the months of July and August. And self-organizing maps were applied on the vertical pressure levels of the Eurasian zonal mean zonal wind. And this is how the climatology looks for this. Um, field for July and August of the period studied. So in the horizontal axis, we see the latitudinal zones from 25 degrees north up to 80 degrees north. And in the vertical axis, we see the pressure levels from 800 hectopascal closer to the surface up to 100 hectopascal upper in the troposphere. And with the, sh uh, the shading, we see the wind speed in meters per second. And we can see the maximum of the wind speed at around 200 hectopascal and 40, 45 degrees north, which is the subtropical jet stream. And we can see that uh, there is no um, particular secondary maximum in the zonal mean zonal uh, wind speed. Regarding heat waves, as we know, there are many different heat wave definitions that exist out there, depending on the region, the season, the scope of the study, etc. Here, we followed the following definitions. Uh, first of all, the temperature threshold uh, is that the daily maximum temperature has to be larger than the 90th percentile based on a 15-day window. The temporal extension we chose is that of at least six consecutive days, which is a, larger, a rather large um, threshold because we are interested in uh, long and persistent heat waves. And we also chose a special ext extension of um, larger than 40,000 square kilometers within a sliding window. And then we used the cumulative heat metric, which is the integration of heat exceedance over the threshold for each heat wave event and for the whole spatial extent. And here we can see this formula. And uh, we can look at this metric as a time series for the whole European domain in this figure, and we see that it exhibits an upward trend. And we see the two year 2010, which is very particular with a very high um, amount of cumulative heat, 
And we can see it here also in the spatial domain that it had really a large spatial extent. In order to link the jet stream states with climate, we use different ways. Uh, one of those is to present composites of the detrended variables for the jet stream states. Then we move on and we use a linear regression model in order to quantify the part of the variability of the heat waves that can be explained by the variability in the jet stream states. And then we estimate the trends in the heat waves based on the linear regression output and we compare them to observed trends. Here I would like to mention that you will uh, hear about this um, notion of residual trend, uh, which in our case, when we say residual trend, we mean the observed trend minus the mean mid latitude land trend, because we can assume that this mean mid latitude land trend is an approximation of the thermodynamical uh, trend, which is more or less simil similar over the whole mid latitudinal zone. And therefore, the residual trend, after we have subtracted this term, would be the dynamical one. Starting with the results, first of all, regarding the heat wave trends, we see here the trends in the mid latitudes in heat wave frequency, and we see that in many regions of the mid latitudes, heat waves are increasing. And this is particularly true for Europe, as seen in the extended European domain that is included in this uh, red dashed box. Uh, if we look at the distribution uh, of those trends for all land grid points for the mid latitudes in blue and Europe in brown, we see how the trends in Europe are larger and in mean, uh, in average, they are almost three times larger than in the rest of the mid latitudes. And this is even more pronounced when we look at the heat wave cumulative intensity. Here the trends are larger, as you can see in the color scale, and when we compare Europe to the mid latitudes, this trend is four times faster. So let's see now what are the three jet stream states that we obtained from the self-organizing maps methodology. Uh, and here they are. Those are the composites for the different pressure levels. Uh, a single jet occupying 37% of the uh, days, a double jet with 36% and a mixed jet with 27% of frequency. Uh, in order to get a better idea of how those um, states look, we also plot here the anomalies of the U wind at the 250 hectopascal level in the spatial domain. And we can see how the single Z is characterized by a belt of increased uh, zonal winds at the uh, latitudes of around 45 to 60 degrees north. The double Z, on the other hand, has a this double peak, uh, we can, which we can see both in the different pressure levels and the 250 hectopascal level, with a secondary maximum above the polar front in higher latitudes. The mixed jet, mixed jet starts as a double jet over the North Atlantic, but it doesn't have a, character, a strong character over the whole Eurasian sector in the polar front. And what is important is to look at the frequency and the persistence of these jet stream states per year. Uh, when we refer to frequency, we talk about how many days belong to each jet stream state per year, and the, free, and the persistence refers to the maximum persistence, so the longest event uh, of consecutive days per year. And we see that the double jets have been increasing with a statistically significant rate, and their frequency is increasing with almost three days per decade, and the persistence with almost two days per decade. And practically, we're talking about a doubling in frequency throughout the study period, which is actually driven by the increase in persistence. The other two jet stream states do not show very significant changes. Next, we will see how those jet stream states link to surface temperature. So again, for these three jet stream states, we are looking now at the composites of the mean surface temperature, and we can see that the single jets are linked to warmer temperatures over southern Europe and the Mediterranean, practically, while the double jets are linked to warmer temperatures over northern, western and eastern Europe. The mixed jets are mainly characterized by negative temperature anomalies over the whole European domain. 
But even more importantly, we want to look at heat extremes. So I am showing to you now the composites of heat wave cumulative intensity, and in particular, the relative anomaly compared to the climatology of the whole period studied. So we can see immediately that the double jets are characterized by particularly increased values of cumulative uh, intensity of heat waves, especially over uh, Central and Western Europe. While uh, the single jets have some increased values for um, Central and, and Western Mediterranean, while the mixed jet is not particularly linked to very high values in Europe. After having shown with the composites that the double jets are important for the variability of heat extremes in Europe, we want to look at this aspect from a different angle. So now we regress the heat wave cumulative intensity for its grid point on the double jet persistence in order to see what part of the variability of the heat waves is explained by this double jet persistence. And we can see in this map that especially in the region of Western Europe, as included in the red dashed box, those values are very high, uh, reaching 35% uh, uh, over Northern Germany. If we aggregate over the whole European domain and we regress again this aggregated cumulative heat time series uh, on the double jet persistence, the, the percentage of the variability explained is around 5%. However, when we focus on Western Europe, then this percentage increases a lot, reaching al almost 25%. Next, based on the outcome of this linear regression model, we want to estimate the heat wave trend based only on the increase of double jet persistence. In these two maps, we can see the observed residual trend and the estimated residual trend. Uh, in the, on the right-hand map, we can see that the grid points that are marked with dots uh, have the same sign of trend as the observed. And we can see that especially over Western Europe, this um, percentage of grid points is rather big. Uh, if we aggregate over the whole European domain, then the explained trend based only on the increase of double jet persistence is around 30%. However, when we aggregate over the Western European domain only, then the explained residual trend by the increase of double jet persistence is almost 100%, which is an important finding, highlighting the significance of the double jet for this specific region of Europe. In order to conclude, we have found that summer double jets have doubled in frequency driven by an increase in persistence. Further, we found that they are linked to increased temperature and heat waves over large parts of Europe, and that they explain part of the heat wave variability peaking over Western Europe. Additionally, they can explain almost all residual increase in heat wave trend over Western Europe. The ways forward for this work are to look at CMIP6 models and see how they represent these such jet stream states in the historical runs and how those look for the future projections. Uh, additionally, we would like to dig in deeper on what causes this increase in summer double jets and whether our hypothesis that has to do with the increased high latitude land warming uh, is uh, valid. So thank you very much for your attention and here you can see the references from this presentation. <laughs>